Hi, Mr. Romano. Hey, hi. I'm Hank. Hank, how are you? Everybody calls me Scooter. Ah, okay. Scooter? Yeah. What's, uh, what's with the camera? Oh, that's a behind-the-scenes crew. We're doing a behind-the-scenes of the behind-the-scenes? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's it, huh? That's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's the script. Hi, I'm Ray Romano, and I'm here in the frozen tundra to give you a first look at the new movie, Ice Age. Yeah. Uh, but, but was this, was it written for me, this thing? Uh, no, yeah. No, just because people are going to expect funny, you know? Just, oh, uh, oh. You got to read things before you say yes to them. You know, I know it's kind of late in the game, but I'm wondering maybe, is there like a better way we can open this? Maybe? Oh. The weirdest shirt I've ever seen. Ow! You gonna get some of this? No, I already ate. Yeah. That's good right there. Right here? Yeah. All right. That's not mammoth meat, is it? No, that's chicken. I know. As a joke, I, I play a mammoth in the movie. Oh, yeah. right. You know, when they told me they wanted me to do Vice Age, at first I said, yeah, you know, my idea of fun is not freezing my butt off in subarctic temperatures. Well, I thought Ice Age was one of those cool computer animated movies. Yes, Scooter. That's. <laughs> I was just joking there again. It was. You gonna film me eating? Prepare for the Ice Age. Ice Age. I've heard of these crackpots. Subarctic temperatures will force us underground for a billion billion years. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> During the Ice Age, where all the other animals are heading south, I'm not going. And Manfred is heading north, just because everyone else is heading south. Move your issues off the road! If my trunk was that small, I wouldn't draw attention to myself, pal. And meets up with Sid. Get off me! Sid is like a thorn in Manny's side. Check this out. <laughs> Doing it for attention, just ignore him. Sid is really lovable. Just one of those guys who is always a little lazy, a little uh, self-interested. Excuse me, ladies. You just keep marinating and I'll be right back. And they end up finding a baby. We should return him. Ah! So it's their journey to find the tribe of humans, and along the way they meet up with Diego. You two are a bit of an odd couple. There is no us. I see. Can't have one of your own, so you want to adopt. You know, a saber-toothed tiger. Good looking. Loved by men. Adored by women. Oh, yeah. Nice try, Buck too. You calling me a liar? I didn't say that. You were thinking it. I don't like this cat. He reads mine. We thought, well, what's the best way to give the Ice Age a presence? Let's set it against one of the animals you might find there. So we came up with this hapless saber-toothed squirrel that's just trying to bury his nut like all squirrels do for the winter. It's a comedy of peril. And he's the third star. He goes through one kind of Roger Rabbit or Wile E. Coyote situation after another. So, who is the hardest person to work with on the movie? Ah, uh, I'm not one for gossip. Besides, they were great. It was a great cast, very uh, funny cast. Uh, well, wait a minute. You know that, uh, that character Scrat? That little uh, saber-toothed squirrely thingy that runs across through the movie? Uh -huh. Yeah, he ticked me off. <laughs> Kept up stage in all my scenes. But everybody else was good. Legazama, Leary, they were all amazing, yeah. But that little chump scratch. It's a lot of fun trying to see who out there would match the characters, and I think we got great voices for our movie. They're all bringing their own special thing to each role. You're an embarrassment to nature. Do you know that? Oh. Oh. Ray has oh. a great comedy voice, but he also has 
a little bit reserved cynicism. It was fun just playing this character. I mean, you know, on TV I play this kind of guy who tries to get everybody to love him. And here's this personality who doesn't care about anyone. Thanks for waiting. Three, two, one. Sure is faithful. I didn't like the fact that after the first time they saw me, they said we have to make his trunk bigger. What's up? Hey, does this look like a petting zoo to you, huh? <laughs> John has a little streetish delivery that makes Sid a slow mover and a fast talker. These are those important animation moments. Don't spear me! Oh! Oh! Ugh! This is the problem. What I did was just all kinds of voices. I did deep, really deep voices. I did southern voices. And then eventually I saw a sculpture of it and I saw the teeth and I figured, you know, those big teeth, if you had big teeth, it would make you kind of talk a little bit like this. So we started going with the lateral lisp. And so I ended up talking like this as Sid the Sloth. It's okay, look, the tigers are just playing tag with the antelope. With their teeth. Come on, Sid. Let's play tag. You're in. And we thought of Dennis Leary when we had our character because he puts on a real tough exterior, but you can tell that he really cares. And he brought that to Diego. Okay. You don't work with the other people. You're not in the room with the other people. And the timing, it's very hard to imagine the timing work, but it does. Diego, spit that out. You don't know where it's been. Boy, for a second there, I actually thought you were going to eat me. I don't eat junk food. You gotta revert back to when you're a child and you're playing in your room and you got imaginary friends. Did you have an imaginary friend? I had an imaginary friend. I still have one. Hi, Stoney. How are you? That's it. You're out of the herd. I guess they want to use the snow effect during the part of the special where they highlight the research that went into creating the world of the Ice Age, you know? Yeah. Give it that sort of air of authenticity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that'll play. If we're going to make a movie about the Ice Age, that the Ice Age itself should be a character. And we started concentrating on mammoths and sloths and tigers and saber-toothed squirrels that lived there. <laughs> we started from, like, the drawings. We started from, like, just to get a feel for what kind of characters we're going to be working with. We looked at a lot of books, Museum of Natural History, and we went through the Ice Age part of it, which was amazing. Hey, yeah! hey, look at that, dinner and a show. I know that some of our colleagues at other studios, when they set a movie in Paris, they take a trip around the world with their sketch pads and they draw. Ours happens in a world that passed away 20,000 years ago, and so about all we had available to us was a trip to the American Museum of Natural History where the mammoths and sloth bones are. I'm putting sloths on the map. Yeah, why don't you make it realistic and draw him lying down? And make him rounder. <laughs> I forgot how to laugh. We should be as accurate as we can as when we portray the Ice Age for our audience because uh, people really haven't been there before. They should know that it really wasn't that long ago. And our anthropologist told us that you know, really, pretty much, you can do anything you want. Just please don't put any dinosaurs in the movie. There weren't any dinosaurs. There were millions of years ago. How do we know it's a knife age? Because of all the ice! You sure I need the hood? Here's your soda, Mr. Romano. Oh, thank you. Oh, can I get some ice? There's no ice. On this set? Are you kidding me? It melted. All right, whatever. All right, listen to this. How does this sound? Taking the research and bringing it all to life was just a simple matter of state-of-the-art computer animation. What we've seen happen recently is a growing excitement about computer-generated imagery. And this film has really spectacular visuals. When I heard that Chris Wedge was going to direct it, they gave me a video of his work, which was funny, that won the Oscar, the animated short, and it was fantastic. It was so funny and sad and so lifelike. That blue sky 
We've been developing animation technology for about 15 years. We've been focusing the technology on character animation, applying it to TV commercials and effects in movies. So we did Aliens for Alien Resurrection, and we did things for Star Trek, and a movie called Joe's Apartment, which I happen to love, singing and dancing cockroaches. Ew! Yuck! Ew! I mean, my goodness. The software we've developed is much more complete simulation of the way light works in the world. <laughs> we have engineers on our staff that understand the physics of, of energy and light, and they program this into the software. So it looks like something that could be in the room with you. Touch me and you're dead. Oh, you say that, but you don't mean it. In computerized animation, you do the voice and then they try to imagine what you would look like saying those things. We have the soundtrack in the scene where we're working with it constantly. How they deliver the line is how we know how much emphasis to put on a certain motion. There's the baby. There he is. You have a very cruel sense of humor. One, two, three. Computers do a lot of work. But fortunately, it's the busy work. The animators act. The computer really has become more the strings on the puppet or the pencil for the artist. At night, computers here busily coloring in the pictures. As animators, we all got a little bit of actors inside of us, and then we have to convince the people that the characters are really acting. It's like you have bad acting, good acting, and we're hoping that our animation is good acting, and we push for that. Spoiled, worthy of such a noble. <laughs> The whole movie is basically a big special effect. I mean, everything is generated. You get water, snow, environments, pretty difficult stuff. It's the latest in animation. I mean, you haven't seen anything like this with so lifelike, the hair and reflections in the water and the sunsets. The environment is just so unbelievable. It's so different than anything you've ever seen before. Oh, oh, oh I'm a genius! You got your lines? Yeah, sure. Right, step forward, please. All right, everybody ready? Roll, please. Ice Age behind the scenes special, scene one, take one. And action. Hi, I'm Ray Romano, and I'm here in the frozen tundra to give you the first look at the new movie, Ice Age. Cut. Great. Ray, good working with you. Thanks so much. All right, we got everything we need. Check the gate. Well, Let's you, get out of here. You kidding me, right? What do you mean? That's, that's it? Why? Is it like a, a union thing? Why are we leaving? All right, that's, we're done, I guess. Yeah. Hey, you want to go get a burger? Um, yeah, I'm full. Thank you. You, you need a ride? I'm good, thanks. Hey, what are you doing tomorrow? I, I'll call you, I got your number. Oh, welcome, this is Ra Romano. Um, Romano. Yeah. Romano. Excuse me, Mr. Romano. You see that nut that went by? Who? Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Let me tell you something. You tell the director he's got a tough back. He'd already had a uh, pretty successful history of working with animals, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know my lines that well. 